Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about inverse functions. To begin with the main concept, suppose that my function f takes as input the blue square and then outputs an orange triangle. Now sometimes there might exist a corresponding function g that inputs the orange triangle and then outputs the blue square. Basically in this case, g undoes f or g negates f. This gives rise to the phenomenon of inverse functions. By definition, let f of x be a function. If there is a function g of x such that f composed with g of x is equal to x and g composed with f of x is equal to x, then g of x is called the inverse of f of x and is denoted by f to the negative 1 of x. The common phraseology is f inverse of x. Before we start computing function inverses, we need to talk about this idea of a function being one-to-one. -one. Basically, if a function is one-to-one, -one, we have this property of uniqueness in the correspondence between inputs and outputs. To make this clear, let's look at the vending machine. And we're going to start off with a non-example. In other words, we're starting off with a function that is not one-to-one. -one. So take this vending machine. I have columns 1, 2, and 3, and rows A, B, and C, and those codes will give me the food item that is in that corresponding slot. Now one thing to notice about this vending machine is sometimes I do have the same food item in multiple slots. Here we see that the codes A1 and B3 give me the blue item. Reading further into this, we see that A2 and C3 give me the orange, A3 and C2 give me the purple, and B1 and C3 give me the green. So here, we can't exactly backtrack. If I knew that I had a blue item, I can't tell you if you punch in the code A1 or B3. This is because I have multiple codes that go to the same food item. So backtracking this function is impossible, which means that this function is not one-to-one. -one. Basically, a function is not one-to-one -one if two separate inputs give me the same output. Again, since the separate codes A1 and B3 both give me the blue item, this function cannot be one-to-one -one because I don't have uniqueness here. So let's suppose that I alter my vending machine a little bit. I'm going to change the stock of this vending machine so that I have all distinct food items. Now we see that every slot of this vending machine has its own food item and no two slots share the same food. This is going to mean that the correspondence between my codes and my food items are completely unique. To run through this more precisely, let f be the function that sends codes to food. We know that f of a1 gives me blue, f of b2 gives me pink, f of c1 gives me white, and so on. But since all the slots are distinct, I can make a backwards function that I'll call g that sends food to codes. In other words, this is just a backtracking function, so to speak. In so doing, I notice that g of the blue item gives me a1, g of the black item gives me c2, and so on because give me any food item from this vending machine and I know exactly which code you type to get it because again, all slots have unique food items. Therefore, we conclude that G is F inverse. So that's it for the conceptual part of this video. So the next few examples will give you some examples of how to compute inverses directly and how to detect whether a function has an inverse or not. I said before that a function cannot have an inverse if it is not one-to-one. -one. There's actually a test to see if functions are one-to-one -one by looking at the graphs. It's called the horizontal line test. Basically, any horizontal line that crosses your graph more than once tells you that the function you're looking at is not one-to-one. -one. By drawing horizontal lines on my left and right graphs, I see that I am crossing my graph multiple times with the same horizontal line. So my left and right graphs are not one-to-one. -one. However, with my middle graph, any horizontal line I draw will cross my graph at most once so that tells me that my orange graph in the middle is one-to-one. -one. Therefore, it has an inverse, whereas the other two graphs do not. In this slide, I'm going to describe a function by its xy chart. Let f of x be defined by the following chart, with the listed inputs and the corresponding outputs. First, I want to check if f is one-to-one. -one. Kind of like the vending machine, I just need to make sure that all of the outputs are unique. So I'm going to run through and read off the list of f of x values to see if any of them match. Doing so, I notice that all these numbers are distinct, which tells me that this function is in fact one-to-one. -one. So we can construct an inverse. The way to do that is pretty simple. We're basically going to flip the xy chart. To build this, I'm going to label the table with x and f inverse of x. 
and then I'm going to take the outputs of f of x and make those my inputs for f inverse of x. Copy the information like so, and we see that we have the xy chart for f inverse of x. Now whenever we need to compute values, we can just read off the new table. So we see that f inverse of 0 comes out to be negative 2, and that f inverse of negative 12 comes out to be positive 1. Now let's do some more interesting examples. Let f of x equal to 2x minus 4, and let's find f inverse of x. There is a strategy to follow here. Basically what we're going to do is look at our original function. Everywhere I see the symbol f of x, I'm going to replace it with the letter x. And everywhere I see the letter x, I'm going to replace it with f inverse of x. Once I've made these substitutions, all I have to do is solve for f inverse of x. So with these replacements, f of x equals 2x minus 4 becomes x equals to 2 times f inverse of x minus 4. As I run through the steps, I see that I get 2 times f inverse of x equals to x plus 4, which tells me that f of x inverse is equal to x plus 4 over 2, and we're done. So that's really all there is to finding the inverse of a function. You substitute f of x with x and x with f inverse of x, and then solve for f inverse of x. The original function f of x equals to 2x minus 4 is a linear function, and those are always going to be 1 to 1. For our next example, let f of x equal to 27x cubed minus 4, and then we'll find f inverse of x. And we're going to do it the exact same way we did in the previous slide. By replacing f of x with x, and by replacing x with f inverse of x, I get that x is equal to 27f inverse of x cubed minus 4. As I simplify, I get 27f inverse of x cubed equals to x plus 4, which tells me that f inverse of x cubed equals to x plus 4 over 27. So what I need to do now is take the cube root of both sides. When I do that, I find that f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 4 over 27. And then after my final step of simplification, I get a final answer of f of x inverse equals to 1 third times the square root of x plus 4, and we're done.